I start putting the axles together, I want to show my newly designed outer CV adapter. So this is called a gator boot. And basically before the bolts I were using were just way too big of a head. And it was actually when it was spinning, it was nicking on the control arm because the bolts were sticking out a little bit. But I got new bolts to fix that. And I also redesigned the adapter and pushed this boot back about a full centimeter uh, away from the control arm. So basically how this is gonna work is that just snaps in there like that. I have bolts that I can show next. And of course, I'm gonna put some, some goop in there to seal it all up. I got new bolts that don't go past here. And because I moved it back a centimeter, it's actually not possible for the bolts to hit anymore. And then of course, that's gonna go on there with um, an O-ring and some set screws. And then that's gonna be the, the new outer. Obviously, that's gonna push down more. Let me show these bolts. I'm gonna start putting this together and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And I can show it in the car a little bit too and how I fix some of the clearance issues. And then looking closer at my adapter, this is just PLA, 100% infill. No problems with this breaking. There's no stress on this, so it won't break and there's no heat back there either. Basically, one thing I did is I recessed it uh, two and a half millimeters. And then I was also able to just take a whole bunch more off the design and push it back more while still having full CV uh, in and out. Um, so I really did make improvements on these and hopefully, well, not hopefully, this is gonna fix the clearance issue once and for all because now it is physically impossible for the bolts that hold this together to hit the control arm. And I'll show that next. I got the new boot adapter put together. You can see how these bolts no longer extend past the boot. And since this has moved in, it can't hit. And I'll show that in a second here. Put some goop on the inside and also on the bottom of this. Bolted it all down, thread locked it, and this is ready to go. And basically, just goes on the CV like that. But obviously, uh, you got to put this all on the axle first and blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to go test fit this piece right now. You see, I got to push it down a little bit more. And then we'll go test fit this, and I'll show you the clearance improvement. And at last, that pesky, pesky CV boot clearance issue is finished. I have the subframe fully bottomed out. I got the control arm bottomed out on the subframe. And it's hard to see, but there is a gap there. And I can, in fact, turn the wheel and nothing scrapes. See those bolts right there? They're not even close anymore. Zoom in. Right there. So there is a little bit of gap between the black plastic and the control arm. It's just really hard to see. We can lower the jack a little bit. See? There is tons of room now between those bolts and the control arm and also my black adapter and the control arm. I mean, you gotta remember, there's also a bump stop that's never gonna let it actually get up. But look, you can just keep going and going and going. And just when it bottoms out on the subframe is just when it starts, this starts hitting the control arm. So like, it's perfect. And if we go and look at the old axles, you can see that these bolts, they were sticking out. And let me take that out real quick and I'll put these side by side and actually show the difference. Hopefully this is fairly visible in the video, but if we line these up, so you wanna line them up right there, you can actually see that this has moved in a centimeter. See, so look at the bolts right there, how much it's moved in. Because the old version had like this step for some reason that pushed it out. Don't need that little step, removed that, which was I think seven and a half millimeters. And then I also recessed it two and a half millimeters and now, Look at the difference in the, let me line them up. Look at the difference in the bolt location. You can see how much more back these are and also how much smaller they are. They don't protrude out anymore. These used to protrude out and they would nick on the control arm. This problem should be fully solved now. So no more um, CV boot adapter clearance issues on full launch on the outers. And I can't wait to test it. Got the CVs torqued up to the new axle stub. I used all 12.9 hardware and I used blue thread locker and torqued them to 60 pound feet, which is about 80, 85 newton meters. I built this little rig here so that you can actually torque it and not have the whole axle turn. It's a pain to put it in the vise. So I just stuck the uh, vise attached to an old hub under the lift. The car weight isn't on it, just the um, the weight of the lift post is on it and it's plenty to keep it from springing up and twisting. Too lazy to mount my vise and I don't want to mount it because sometimes I like to move it to do stuff but this worked out really well. I got these really torqued up and these um, 
spark erosion cut threads held up great and you can see I got the bolt length perfect full engagement and uh, like I said blue thread locker on all of them so they won't back out so it's time to put these axles in pretty much ready to go here both of these are all torqued up to 60 pound feet plus blue thread locker got this little um, seal shield on um, I still got to put the other clip in on this one the uh, C clip that that one's in and uh, yeah they're looking good new boot adapters got the uh, set screws in these are put in all thread locked all clamped hopefully these things hold some torque I don't know well, I got the car all back up everything is bolted together CVs are doing good so far new ones doing real good Still staying nice and tight. No leaks. Rear's doing pretty good. Front, the only thing I really did in the front, or that I had a part in the front, was some of the angle gear uh, lines. You can see I got a little bit of what looks like a leak there. So I gotta tighten that up more and maybe tighten this one up a little bit more, but I'm gonna let the car cool down and do that another day. No problems up there. Blue turbo feed is doing pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I got to do a once over on everything and hopefully we can get more miles on this puppy. So now that the car is running, um, I did like 10 miles on it with the new axles and everything, but I just about rolled over to 500. So I want to do a bolt, bolt, nut and bolt check on literally everything. So I checked all the subframe bolts. There's three on each side. I checked these, 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 uh, these, 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 these bolts on both sides. Checked all the V bands. I checked all of the fuel system stuff. Surge tank up here is fine. All the fittings are great. All the electrical connections. So I looked at all the EVAP stuff and that stuff's all nice and tight. Checked all the viscous coupler stuff. Checked this big bolt here. Checked all these bolts. I also checked all of these. Checked all the brake lines. Checked all the brake bolts. Checked the hubs. I mean, I checked this, everything. Um, checked all these plate bolts here that hold the carrier bearing up. No problems there. Checked all the subframe bolts. Checked this engine mount bolt. Checked all these engine mount bolts. Just gotta do the side one. Suspension should be good. I just did that recently, but I still wanna double check all that soon. Probably do that next. Exhaust is good, prop shaft's good. All the angle gear bolts are tight. Everything's looking pretty good under the car. I gotta uh, check the um, top side of things, like all the accessories and alternator and power steering pump, blah, blah, blah. But all that stuff should be tight. Um, I want to get this all the way with, and if everything's tight, I should never have to worry about any of this uh, again. If nothing has loosened in 500 miles, it's probably not going to loosen. So, we're getting there. Almost time to do some more tuning soon. Double checked all of the front suspension components, end links, all the tie rods, control arms, struts, axle nuts are staying in place, brake calibers, brake lines, double checking stuffs. Not an excuse to be lazy on your initial assembly. It's just for good peace of mind. Nothing's moving down here. Crank nut staying put. All that engine mount, all those engine mount bolts are all tight. Checked it all on both sides. I think this stuff's fine. Definitely no issues with anything loosening up. Again, checked everything. Um, checked stuff under the car already. Showed that in the last clip. Gonna put the wheels on, torque it up, pop the hood, and torque some of the stuff, or recheck some of the stuff in the engine bay, like the accessories and anything that's critical. So, gonna get that done so I can start driving this thing again. Not sure if I've said this before, but this is the oil I use, Pen Grade Partial Synthetic. It's a uh, comes in 12 quart packs. You usually get two changes out of it. Yeah, it's a 2050 Partial Synthetic, and it's green, so it's pretty easy to see drips. And uh, it also has high levels of zinc and phosphorus, which is good for 
high horsepower, high RPM engine. So I've been running this stuff forever and works pretty good. And of course, all these OEM filters and OEM filter housing. So yeah, oil looks good. I'm gonna get this in, get six quarts, and uh, I wanna get this thing on the road soon. Boost leak test in the system. Just gonna do it to one bar. One bar is good enough. I was checking it with the hood open, but I, I'm not sticking my face near that stuff. You get these things pop off at a couple bar, you're getting knocked with 100 pounds of force. So, try and get it to 13, 14 pounds. It's about as high as I can get it. And you can see it leaks down pretty slow. That's just through the rings. There's nothing. You can't hear anything. There's a tiny little leak on the throttle body seal, which is very normal in these cars, but you can kind of hear it there. Other than that, I don't hear anything out of anywhere, so one bar is going to be good enough for me. Anything above that, if it leaks, is going to be very, very minor and probably irrelevant. Um, so yeah. Pretty happy with that. And I'll show the setup I got uh, in a minute. Got one of these boost leak testers that I just bolt on to the uh, compressor inlet. And then I got a Schrader valve extension. And then I just sit in the car and watch my computer. And I got one of these cheap tire gauges. And just a real basic three gallon compressor. I can't really keep up, honestly. I can't get much above 13, 14 pounds. But honestly, that's good enough. There's no reason to crank this thing up to uh, 40 pounds. If anything's gonna pop, a little bit of pop on the dyno when I'm not standing over in it, trying to listen to it, you know? I've had this pipe pop off before on the dyno, and this will knock you out. You know, if you calculate how much force when this thing pops off, three inch tube, like 30 pounds, there's no reason to crank it up like that. You'll get smacked in the face at that. Ain't interested in doing that. Learned my lesson about pressure with the press. Good enough for me. I think we can start doing some more tuning on this thing. Ended up having my fan fail on me. The bearing is pretty much shot and when it gets warm, it just starts grinding and crunching and just does not want to work. So fortunately, I was able to get a brand new fan from Volvo. This is actually the last one in the US. A lot of these parts are starting to uh, go away unfortunately hopefully Volvo brings them back but yeah they're pretty darn similar the only difference is that um, I did the fan shroud mod so basically what that does is on the fan shroud instead of mounting it on the outside of the shroud you mount it on the inside of the shroud and it, it pulls the fan back a whole bunch and gives you a ton more clearance but <laughs> in order to do that you got to chop some of your fan apart so i gotta chop up my uh 250 dollar fan oh well it'll be worth it um it gives so much more room in the engine bay especially with that intake manifold and everything so i'm gonna get that all dremeled up get that all put back in and i also noticed the new fan looks like it has a starting capacitor which will be great because this old one i mean because the bearing was going just because it's old i mean this thing is pulling massive current on start and it just bogs the whole system down it gets the idle all wonky so i think replacing it's really going to help with the electrical system um, this should hopefully pull a little bit less current be a little bit more efficient since it's not 26 years old but good job baba 26 years old for a fan can't beat that let's get this installed oh it absolutely pained me to cut up this brand new beautiful fan but you can see you got to cut it up here and then you got to cut a little bit down here so that it fits into the shroud on the opposite side. So you put it in on the inside of the shroud instead of the outside of the shroud and it pulls it back a bunch. Um, and then you put three bolts in. I'm going to get those three bolts in, get this buttoned up back in the car. I'm going to start driving this again. Getting good miles on her. I'm going to temp a couple things. Exhaust is around 120. It's cooled down a little bit. Let's try and get our angle gears like 
170, 170. It's hard on the shiny surface. 160. It's like 150 to 170. Oil coolers, 153. Oil pans, 172. That all makes sense. Can't really see the gun, but that's okay. 155 on the trans. Let's check this housing. 150. Want to get the rear diff too? Rear diff's about 140. These CVs. Yeah, everything's staying pretty cool. Oh, let's get the surge tank. 108. Ooh, that's real good. That's just slightly warm to the touch after like two hours of driving. Everything's definitely running really well. The new fan's working great. Um, if I can get some more footage of me ripping this thing, I did about 10 or 10 to 14, actually I did 14 uh, second gear pulls, couple halfway thirds. Everything's looking really good. There's no major leaks, no major problems. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how things are running so far. And my new uh, turbo feed up there is working a lot better.